All right, welcome to the sixth lesson of our tutorial series on how to create 2048. For this lesson, we're going to be going over how to handle the action event that we created in the previous video. But before we get started, I'd like to tell you about our number one selling Unity package, which is our PUN2 matchmaking add-on. Now we do have a tutorial series on how to create this package for free, but if you'd rather get this package already working, you can buy it for $4 on our website at www.infogamerhub.com store. This package allows you to quickly set up a matchmaking connection using the Photon PUN2 plugin. And this package features four different matchmaking systems, which are Quick Start, Delay Start, Custom Matchmaking, and Code Matchmaking. Now, if you haven't bought this package already, I'd highly recommend it, as it'll save you a bunch of time with setting up your multiplayer games. Now, on with the lesson. All right, so to handle the action sent by the player's input, let's open up the Cell 2048 script. Now the first thing that we're going to do inside this script is make some changes for how we're going to store the fill object. Right now we're just making the fill object a child to the cell, but instead I want to create a variable for referencing our fill object. So this is going to be public fill 2048, and we'll just call it fill. We can then save this script and we'll go over to our game controller script. Now inside our spawn fill function we need to add some code after we're instantiating our fill prefab. And I'm going to add it in after we get the fill script from that prefab. And what we need to do is get the cell script from the current cell that we're instantiating this fill prefab onto. So this is going to be all cells square brackets which spawn dot get component and we're looking for the cell 2048 script and then we can access the fill variable so dot fill and we'll set it equal to our temp fill comp we can then copy this line of code and add it into our else statement let's then go ahead and save this script and we'll go back to our cell 2048 script so now this variable will be initialized when we have a fill object instantiated in this cell now to handle the movement of the fill objects on our 2048 grid, we actually kind of need to work backwards. And that's because it's easier to work from the cell that we want to move into than the cell that we're currently in. So inside our onSlide function, I'm going to add in some if statements, checking to see if what was sent is equal to w d s and A. Now if it's equal to W, that means we're shifting all the fill objects in the up direction. And so I want to check to see if the current cell that we're working from is one of the top cells. To do this, I'm going to add in an if statement checking to see if our up variable does not equal null. If it does not equal null, that means our current cell is not one of the cells on the top row. And so we'll return. Let's then create a temp variable of type cell2048, and we'll call this current cell, and we'll set it equal to this. And at this point, let's create a recursive function that will execute on each cell as we traverse down the column. So this is going to be a void function, and we'll call it slide up. The parameter for this function will be of type cell2048, and we can as well call this current cell. To make sure this is going to work, let's add a debug.log statement, and we'll pass in current cell.game object. We then need to add in a condition for recursing through this function. We'll type if current cell.down equals null, then we'll return. Otherwise, we want to call slide up again, and we'll pass in current cell dot down. Let's then call the slide up function where we left off in our on slide function, and we'll pass in current cell. Now let's go ahead and save this, and we'll test it out. Now, one word of advice at this point: it's super important that you make sure that all of your direction variables are set correctly. If not, it could cause an infinite loop or you'll just traverse the rows and columns in the wrong order. All right, so now when I press W, here you can see we have cell two, six, 10, and 14, which if I select those, two, six, 10, 
14. Those are all the cells in the second column going top to bottom. Then have 1, 5, 9, 13. 1, 5, 9, 13. Those are all the cells in the first column. So it looks like this is all working properly, so we'll go back to our cell script. Now inside our slide up function, whatever code we add before this if statement will be executed on each cell as we traverse down the column. Now the first thing that we need to do is check to see if our current cell is filled or not. And so we'll type if current cell dot fill does not equal null the next thing that we want to do is get the next available cell that is filled. So we'll create a local variable of type cell2048. We'll call it next cell and we'll set it equal to current cell dot down. Let's then create a while loop and we'll check to see if next cell dot down does not equal null or next cell dot fill equals null. If both these conditions are true, then we want to get the next available cell. So we'll type next cell equals next cell dot down. Now if we break out of this while loop, it means that we're either at the end of our column or we've ran into a cell that is filled or both. So we'll first check to see that we are filled. So if next cell dot fill does not equal null. We can then check to see if the current cell has the same value as this next cell. But to do this we first need to go over to our fill script and change the value variable so that it is public. We can then save this script. Now we can check if current cell dot fill dot value is equal to next cell dot fill Dot value. Now if this is true, let's debug a message to the console. So debug.log, and we'll just say doubled. The other thing that we're going to do is set the parent of the next cell's fill to be the current cell. So we'll type next cell dot fill dot transform dot parent equals current cell dot transform. Now all of this handles the condition that there are two fill objects of the same value that are then going to be combined. So let's handle the condition where they're not the same value. So I'll type else, we'll debug.log, I'll do exclamation mark doubled. So we're not doubling. As for code, we want to set the parent of our next fill to be the next cell from our current cell. So I'm going to type next cell dot fill dot transform dot parent equals current cell dot down dot transform. Now the else for this if statement just means that we're at the end of our column and that cell is empty. And so we'll skip that else statement and we'll create an else statement for this if statement. Now this else statement means that the current cell is empty. Now if the current cell is empty, we still want to look for the next available fill object. And so we'll select our local variable, our while loop, and our if statement, and we'll paste it in down here. And so if there is an available fill object in this column, we don't have to check to see if the value is equal to our current cell's value because our current cell is empty. All we have to do is move that fill object to the position of our current cell. And so let's set the parent of that fill object. So next cell dot fill dot transform dot parent equals current cell dot transform. But then what we need to do is recurse through this function again for the same current cell. And so I'm going to type slide up and pass in current cell. I'm also going to add in a debug.log and I'll say slide to empty. Now there's actually a few changes that we need to make before we can test this script. The first is that we need to change the ors to ands in our while loops. 
And the next is that we need to add a condition for if we're at the end of our column. And so at the top of our slide up function, I'm going to check to see if current cell dot down equals null. And if it does, then we can just return. And there's one last thing that I've forgotten to do, and that is anytime we're changing the parent of a fill object, we need to set the fill variable of that cell to be the fill object that we're moving. So right here, we're going to type current cell dot fill equals next cell dot fill. We'll also clear out the fill variable of the old cell. So next cell dot fill equals null. We then need to do the same thing here and here. So current cell dot fill equals next cell dot fill and next cell dot fill equals null. And then here it'll be current cell dot down dot fill equals next cell dot fill and next cell dot fill equals null. Now we can save the script and we'll go back to Unity. All right, so I'm going to click play. I'll then press the space bar to add in some fill objects. And there we have two fill objects that are in the same column and they have the same value. I'll then press W. Now you'll notice that some of our fill objects just disappeared and that's due to a layering issue with the UI. But we'll fix that in a future lesson. But what you'll also notice is that our first four cells, which are the top cells of our 2048 grid, have all the fill objects as children. So it looks like that's working. Hey, thank you so much for watching to the end of this lesson. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.